So, in lesson five, we looked at Newton's second law in rectangular coordinates. The procedure we used was to identify the reference frame, place our x, y, z axes, and make sure that reference frame is not accelerating, though it could be at any angle. Then we drew our free body diagrams showing all our external forces, and we identified the expected direction of our acceleration, which could be a guess if we were just had no idea. We applied Newton's second law, which is the sum of the forces in any given direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in that direction. And that gave us three equa up to three equations if we were working in three dimensions. And in some cases, we needed to use our kinematic equations to relate those accelerations to velocities, distances, or time. We're going to follow a similar method in our NT and cylindrical coordinates. So we're going to establish an inertial reference uh, frame. In NT, we're going to establish a normal tangential reference frame. We're going to draw a free body diagram showing all of our forces in the NT directions and breaking up any force that isn't in the NT direction into components along the N or the T. We're going to identify the expected directions of our accelerations. We have two components in this case, so AN will always point inwards towards the center of curvature for the path, and AT will always point in the path direction. Then we apply Newton's second law, and we use kinematics again. So Newton's second law in this case is going to be in the normal tangential direction. So we've got the sum of forces in the tangential direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the tangential direction. And if you remember from lesson four, the acceleration in the tangential direction is simply v dot, or the derivative of the velocity. Similar equation for the normal direction, now the acceleration in the normal direction is v squared over rho. So we will use that expression. Rho is the radius of curvature. Sometimes that's given to us, and sometimes if we're given the path as of y as a function of x, then we will have to take derivatives um, in order to find rho. But we should be able to find rho. If we're dealing with the third direction, the b direction, which is perpendicular to t and n. So if something's moving along a path, the b direction would be coming out of the screen at us. The sum of the forces in that direction are always going to be equal to zero. So let's take an example of this. So this example is a 2D example with a changing row. We're given information about the path. In this case, we're given the equation for the path. And so that's what should give us the hint that we will be using NT coordinates. So if we take a look at what's happening here, we have this car that's going over the hill, and we have an equation for that hill. When the car is at point A, x is going to equal 80, right? And we, we know that v, the speed, is equal to 9, and the speed is increasing at 3 meters per second squared. So we already know this is AT, right, because our equation for AT is V dot. We need to determine both the resultant normal force and the resultant frictional force that all the wheels on the car exert on the road at this instant. And so we're, the normal force is in the N direction, the frictional force will be in the T direction. All right, so let's start with drawing our free body diagram. So I'm going to exaggerate this somewhat, but the car is at A, so it's got a slope. Here's our car. All right. The normal direction is normal to the car. The frictional direction is, if the car is going down the hill, the friction between the wheel and the road is what's making it go down the hill. It's not sliding in this case. The friction is actually causing the car to move. So this is going to be FF, this is going to be N, and the car has some weight, which goes straight down, MG. All right, so now we need to draw our coordinate system. We've got our normal direction, which is towards the center of the curve, right? So our normal direction is in the direction of the, our normal force, pointing in, so that's N hat. And our tangential direction is along the curve, in the direction of motion, right? 
So we're going to say that the acceleration tangentially is going to be that direction as positive. The acceleration normally is going to be that direction as positive. Oh, those don't have hats on them. They're just vectors. There we go. They're vectors. All right. So here's our free body diagram. N and FF are in the directions we need them to be. MG needs to be broken up into components. So if we break this up into components, we've got a component along the N, we've got a component along the T, we need to figure out what that theta is, right, in order to break that up into components. That theta is the same as this theta, right, just based on geometry. This theta, we have the tangent of that theta is equal to the change in the y direction, right, which is the opposite over the change in x, or we could write this as the derivative of y with respect to x at this particular point, x is equal to 80, and we'll find that in a second. So now we have our free body diagram. We can write our equations of motion. We're going to have to come back to them because we're not going to know everything in there, but we can start with that. So let's write the sum of our forces in the, we'll start with normal direction. So we've got negative n, right, it's pointing out and the normal direction is pointing in. Negative n and we've got part of the mg which is going to be positive, it's pointing in. mg and it is the cosine part because it's adjacent to the angle is equal to mass times the normal acceleration. And we've got the sum of forces in the tangential direction. So FF, which is positive, pointing downwards towards in the same direction as T, plus we've got MG sine of theta, also positive, right, pointing in the direction of t is equal to mass times the acceleration in t. And we already know the acceleration in t. So we need to find the acceleration in n, and then we should be, in the, and we need to find theta. And then we should be able to use these two equations to solve for the normal force and the frictional force. So how do we find theta and how do we find a n? Well, a n is going to be v squared over rho which is going to be 9 squared over this radius. So we're going to have to find rho and we're going to have to find theta. If we, th we find both of those in the same process. So let's start with our expression. Let's start with the y direction. So y is equal to 20 times 1 minus x squared over 6,400. dy dx is equal to the constant derivative is 0, so minus... 20 is the constant times 2x divided by 6400, which can also be written as negative 2x over 320. And then the second derivative, d squared y dx squared, is equal to, take the derivative again, negative 2 over 320. So at 80, or, well, everywhere, negative 2 over 220, 320 is equal to negative 0 0.00625. At 80, which is the point we're interested in, this is equal to negative 0.5. All right. Well, we found dy dx. dy dx at 80 is equal to the tangent of theta. So we can take the inverse tangent of... 0.5, or negative 0.5, and we get, let me find that, 26 degrees, 26.6 degrees, in fact. All right, from this, the first and second derivatives of y, with respect to x, we can find rho, because right? rho is equal to 1 plus the first derivative, which is negative 0.5 squared, to the 3 halves divided by the magnitude of the second derivative 00625. Plug those numbers in we get 223.6 meters. Alright so now we have rho 
so we can put it in up here and we can find a n is equal so this is going to be 9 squared over 223.6 which gives us 0.362 and we have theta so now we can go back to these two key equations plug some things in so we have on, in the first one, we have rearranged this. We're solving for n, right? We should have everything other than n. So n is going to equal m, let's plug things in, m is 800 times 9.81 times cosine of 26.6, and that then minus 800 times a n, which is 0.362. So n is equal to 6,727 newtons. That's one part of the equation. All right, I need some more space here. We will use the second equation. So we'll solve for f of f is going to be the mass times the tangential acceleration, so 800 times 3 minus 800 times 9.81 times the sine of 26.6, which gives us 1114 one, one, newtons. So, as a review, we started with the free body diagram. We drew our normal tangential directions. We wrote our force equations. We noticed from our force equations that we didn't have all the information we needed. So we went and we found AN and AT from the definitions of AN and AT relative to the various velocities. So that's from the kinematic equations. We needed to find theta and rho, which we got from the derivatives of the expression for the curve. And that gave us then our solution. Let's take another example where we move into 3D and we use that equation, the B direction, the perpendicular direction. So we've got an airplane, and as you know, when an airplane turns, it dips its wing one direction, right? So it dips its wing into the turn, and that's what cause, allows it to make its turn. So this airplane is traveling at a constant speed of 50 meet meters per second. So V is 50, and it's constant, so V dot is zero. And it's making a horizontal turn. Okay, so gravity is going down, right, in this turn. And to do that, it's banked at an angle of 15 degrees. That when it happens to be at 15 degrees, the pilot experiences only a normal force on the seat. And we need to figure out what this radius is for this, is, for this to happen. The pilot, is, and then we need to figure out what is that normal force if the pilot has a mass of 70. So first of all, let's talk about directions. So this is horizontal. This plane, the tangential direction would be that way, right? The normal direction is towards the center of the circle. And then this up and down direction right here is our B direction. Okay, now if you imagine somebody sitting in this plane, right, and we draw a free body diagram of him, he is going to be tilted at an angle of theta. So if we draw him, here's our guy, right? There's our guy. He's sitting on a seat in the plane. His weight still goes straight down. That doesn't look like straight down. Let me try that again. His weight still goes straight down, mg, right? Um, and we've got a normal force pushing up that way. And in our case, if we now redrew this, right, so we're now zoomed in and we've changed our orientation so that the, we're looking down this tangential direction. So B is straight up in the air. N is horizontal, right, because N is horizontally towards the center. So that's our coordinate system, B and N. Here are our components. Mg is directly along B. The normal force 
is not. So the normal force is the one we need to find the uh, co components of. Well, we're told that the plane is banked at 15 degrees. So this angle right in here is 15 degrees, because that's the tilt of the plane, which tilts the seat, which tilts the normal force. All right, so theta is 15 degrees. We can now write this, the forces, right? So we've got the normal forces in the n direction. There's the n, the part of n, and that's it. None of the mg is in the n direction. So we've got n, and the part that's in the n direction is the opposite part, so sine theta is equal to mass times acceleration in the n direction. And the sum of forces in the b direction is going to give us, let's see, we've got mg, which is in the negative b direction, and we've got the n part, the, the adjacent part of the n, which is the cosine part. And that is going to equal zero because that was the equation, the for, some of the forces in the b have to equal zero. Okay. And since the problem says he only experiences the end, we don't have to have a friction between him and the seat. So those are our two equations. What do we know here? We know m and g, and we know theta. So the bottom equation allows us to find n. n is going to equal mg divided by cosine of theta. We plug in all our known variables there. We end up with 710. Then we take n back up into this equation. So n times sine of 15 is equal to mass times a n. We can solve for a n as being 2.63 meters per second squared. All right, now what were we trying to find? The radius of curvature, right? Rho? Well, we remember from the equation a n is v squared over rho. V squared is given to us, and its units is meters per second, so we don't have to convert it. So 50 squared divided by rho needs to equal 2.63, and we can solve for rho then to be 951 meters. So as the, the plane is turning, its radius of curvature is almost a kilometer. So in this problem, just to review, we drew our free body diagram. We drew our coordinate system. In this case, it was NB. We weren't interested in anything in the tangential direction. We wrote our free body, we wrote our equations of motion, or our Newton's second law equations. And we were able then to solve for our acceleration. And then we used our definitions from kinematics in order to find information about the radius.